Our Colorado-based family just set up a second home in Metro Manila, Philippines. And after spending about three weeks in the big city, we decided it was time to get back out into nature for some more Filipino-style adventure. So we had our friends over at Guide to the Philippines set us up with a complete trip itinerary consisting of three nights right here at the Princesa Garden Island Resort and Spa. And on our second full day here in Palawan, Ellen's Travel and Tours has set us up with back-to-back -back adventures. We're gonna be snorkeling, we're gonna be firefly hunting, and we're gonna be exploring even more of the 1,780 islands that make up this province. Let's get to it. We're the Lockwoods and we're traveling the world to experience up close and in person all the natural wonders and distinct cultures that our kids would otherwise see only in textbooks and TV. Now we're hopping back in our van because our guides are already here. Ilsa and Andrew and our driver Frankie. Oh. Hello, good morning. It's just going to be a 30 minute drive. Good morning. Okay, we have a little pit stop before we go to the dock and that's to get our snorkel gear. A very important component to this day. The rental shop is called Yazi and it's one of the more popular ones in Puerto Princesa because of their sanitation of the masks, their cleanliness, their supply, and because of their awesome shop here. They've got a big TV showing you what you're gonna see when you get to Starfish Island. That's gonna be your first stop. Uh, and their uh, awesome products here. And because they're all very friendly as well. Then put it down here, and then you can adjust here and open. What do you think? Is that the right size for him? Yeah. Yes? Okay. You can't hear him with it on. Uh, but this is all also included with our tour package that we have through Ellen's Travels with Tours, and we booked that through Guide to the Philippines. So we've never used a full mask before and we're going to give it a try on this trip. I, I don't know if I'm familiar with these at all. We've only used ones that are like this with the snorkel and the mask separate. So it'll be a fun little experiment. That'll be good. And this is better with my beard because the other kind that comes under your nose, you end up leaking right here. So I think the way that this one wraps around might be better. We also picked out some water shoes. It's because of the venomous stonefish, so you don't want to step on them. They're not mandatory, but it is a good idea. Okay, I think we're all set. Oh yes, we're almost all set. We also need to buy bread to feed the fish. Thank you guys. We've made it to the wharf of Honda Bay right here, and the first thing that we need to do is take care of the manifest, so all of our paperwork, so that we can head out there. Let's get up here with Andrew and Ilsa and see how the process works. Here's how the flow of the tours goes. Once the visitors arrive, either tour guide assisted or you're just a walk-in visitors, you got to register first your name in here. I am very thankful that we're working with Ellen's Travel and Tours because they have taken care of all of that stuff for us. We have nothing to do now except board the boat and enjoy the day. But speaking of the boarding the boat, we're actually starting off right here. And our first stop is Starfish Island and then Luli Island. And then we go to Cowrie Island for an awesome lunch. Before heading right back full circle to this Honda Bay dock. Hey, very good. It is time for us to hit it. Let's go meet our boat guy. I'm so glad that we're doing this today because a lot of people come to Puerto Princesa just to see the subterranean river, which we did yesterday. So please check out that episode. But there is so much more to see here. Palawan is a large province and a long kind of skinny island and there's so much to do. So make sure if you come to Puerto Princesa you leave enough room to do more exploring and island hopping like we're doing today. This is a bigger boat than we were on yesterday. This one will fit I think 20 or a little more. Kind of a loud motorboat but not as loud as the ones we had yesterday. Probably because the engine's housed in the below deck area, so it just muffles it a bit, but it's a whole lot better than yesterday. But it is strong. I can feel my teeth shattering. Or not shattering, chattering. My <laughs> teeth are going da 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 <laughs> Well, we made it to Starfish Island. It's actually low tide right now, so a lot of the rocks are showing and a little bit more of the island is out right now. 
They call it Starfish Island because usually when you pull up, there's tons of starfish everywhere, but it is seasonal and that season is summertime. But we're probably going to find a few. I bet you anything Colt's gonna find some because he can find anything. Okay, looks like Colt's already. This is an uninhabited island and it's beautiful. My favorite part, as it is on most beaches, would just be lounging right here. So it's obviously very non-crowded at the moment because of the seasonality and because we're probably here earlier than some people are gonna show up later. But all of these little hut areas, one of which we have back there completely reserved for our own use, are just overlooking the water. And it's super, super quiet, other than the sound of a little bit of a breeze and a whole bunch of bugs up above in the trees. So there are probably about 50 of these little huts in here, so you could have a pretty good crowd. Here's Bruce Lee, fiberglass. They've got great bathrooms right here. I think Erin just used them so she can tell you whether or not they're very clean, but I think they are. A couple of dogs out, hanging out here. And then over in this area is where they sell fresh seafood. And they'll not only sell it to you, but they'll grill it up for you so you can have it for a meal while you're staying here on the island. Let's take a look. These are sea urchins and they came from right on the shoreline over there and they are edible, but you have to be careful if you don't know about sea urchins, the tips of the needles on them are poisonous. So you don't wanna to touch them, you wanna avoid them. If there are sea urchins in the area, definitely make sure to have water shoes, you don't wanna step on them. They also have these giant clams, mussels, oysters, and they look like little small conch. And right back there is where they'll grill them up. But the popular activity to do here is snorkeling, and it's not so much for the coral system, it's for the fish, there's lots of fish. And we have a little food for them, so maybe they'll gather. But the coral system is not terribly healthy here because people don't always know, you cannot touch coral. Your oils in your skin can kill the coral, and we can't live without our coral systems in the ocean. The ocean can't survive, which means this earth can't survive, so it's really important to keep your hands and feet off of coral when you're swimming. Let's get that bread now. Here you can really notice the low tide because all of this would otherwise be underwater. Brooklyn's using the bread already and it seems to be working just as planned. The bread totally does the trick. They come running with every little drop and then when we stopped feeding them over here, they're all swimming over to Brooklyn because she's dropping some bread in the water over there too. But there's this one really pretty blue guy. We're trying to feed him, but the little yellow and black ones are faster. Ow, ow. Oh, they keep biting my fingers. Mm. Oh, oh, big one and got they're, really, they're really trying to snag it out of his hand, so much so they're taking little bites out of the, the tip of his fingers. <laughs> Woo! Oh, sorry. Aww. Sorry about that. I just got a little uh, jumpy because they tried to take a bite out of my leg. They're like the most gentle little nips and nipples. They don't hurt at all. There are actually a lot of spas where people pay for that because those fish will eat the dead skin off of your feet, so it's like a little pedicure. You know, we were fully anticipating our whole bodies getting wet, snorkeling, swimming around, but not necessary. It's really just the waist down that gets wet and you could see the fish so, so clearly in this beautiful water. And it looks like we are out of bread now. So the fish aren't interested in us anymore. Let's go on shore. All right, we've used up all of our time on this island, so we're gonna jump back on the boat and head to the next one. Adios, Starfish Island. We never did see an actual starfish here. On to the next one. Ooh. Um, Brooklyn, says, hey. Brooklyn says she saw a dead starfish, and there are apparently a lot of brittle stars right now. Ah, oh, thank you. close to the island, it's Luli Island, and there's a diving platform we're passing by, and Colt's getting hyped up! And I'm gonna jump off the giant diving board that's like as tall as this boat, I guess. So Everybody's finding starfish here. The kids are yelling, starfish, starfish, and then there's one right there in front of us. So, wrong island, but we found starfish. <laughs> Less coral here and more sand here, so it's easier to walk on. 
I don't have aqua shoes, so walking on the last one across all that coral was really painful on my feet. This feels more like a sandbar than an island, and you can see how far the tide comes up here. It would just be this little strip of sand if it, the tide was in. Uh, but they have these cute little cottages where we can put our stuff and have some shade if we need it. We haven't even made it to our hut and Colt's already on the dive platform getting ready to jump. <sighs> Clint's running off for the diving platform and I'm gonna go catch up to them because I want to jump too. This is gonna be nothing for Phil because he did, what was it, 10 meters when we did canyoneering in Alegria on Cebu Island. <laughs> That was so high, that was like an epic, epic jump. I love, love, love the sun. I just don't think I could live without feeling the sun on my skin. And this could not be a more perfect day. It has been so windy since we got to Puerto Princesa. But today, not windy, waters are calm, beautiful, perfect, clear sky, awesome weather. Woo! I got salt water in my eyes. It's mommy's turn now. All right, here we go. My turn. It doesn't feel like a diving board. It feels like a pirate ship plank. There you go. You got this, Brooklyn. You won't regret it once you go. Okay, that's everybody but Brooklyn. And if you remember our canyoneering episode, she's not big on the jumps. So I don't know if she's gonna go to the date or not. What do you think, sweetheart? That said, we were on a diving platform pretty much exactly the same height, maybe a little bit higher when we were in Shargao, and she and Colt were just jumping over and over and over. So I think it's just ripping off that Band-Aid, getting the very first one out of the way, and then she would have a lot of fun doing it. I think it's gonna be a no for Brooklyn. I think we're gonna get a couple more dives in and then go chill in the booth. There are more things that you can do on this island. You can rent sea kayaks, and also they have that clear bottom boat. And you can relax on these hammocks. I like that they're made out of bamboo. Or not bamboo, what is that, straw? It's, uh, oh, it's like a leaf. Palm leaf. Palm leaf, palm leaf woven together. And you can just chill, take a nap in here. It might actually be bamboo. Ah, there you go. They also have Holy Smokes, which is a little cottage for food. You can order a few things, but we're not going to have lunch here. We are headed to the next island, and we're going to have a big lunch spread there. There was a jellyfish. It stung our leg, so then we captured it. My sphinx. Is it hurt? Oh, yeah, it still hurts right now. Like, dirt. Too fine, buddy. Found a little jellyfish. You guys stung me all over my leg right there. Mm, big. All right, you guys are going to have to let them. I know. And then let's take a picture and head out. So let's get in the boat. on Kauri Island now, and I love this part of the island that we're on because it's practically surrounded by the water. We're on the tip of it, uh, but this is where we're gonna have our lunch, and we've been told it's gonna be a very delicious lunch, and I am so much in the mood for seafood. Look at this, we have our own little area. It's been reserved for us. We got some nice shade, some tablecloths. I am so hungry though. That's not all they have. I see something over here that seems right up my alley. Got a little bit of everything. I think I'm gonna get a rum because it's such a good beachy drink. I'm just gonna have it on ice if they have ice. No, she wants more Look makeup. at this spread. Oh my gosh, this looks so incredibly good. There's so much I wanna talk about here. So over here is this watercress and it's deep fried. So it's super, super crunchy. So it's like a seaweed that's deep fried and really, really crunchy. Got some green beans, eggplant, and cucumber salad. This platter over here is so fun because they spelled out Palawan in rice. Ooh, yellow rice and Actually, white I rice. I spelled it wrong. Palawan. No, yeah, this says Palawan. Palawan. 
You said it's spelled Palawan. We've got some fried chicken, grilled fish, mussels, I bet they're fresh, and this is some, some pork. And these are really awesome because they're sea grapes. It's a type of seaweed and it has lots of iron in it. So if you need that supplement, you get it in this. I'm gonna try it. I'm gonna try some of that. Mm. This is really good. It almost tastes like pickled seaweed. And then over here we've got some yellow watermelon, pineapple, and of course, mangoes, because we're obsessed with mangoes. I thought that was uh, green beans. It's actually water spinach. And as you can see, this is a lot of food. Too much for a family of four and two guides so they don't waste it, which is really important to us. Uh, they feed the boatmen with it afterwards. Nothing goes to waste. Okay, there are some utensils here, but this meal is not intended to be eaten with utensils, so I'm gonna try to get through without. You know, here's the thing. I love everything about the Philippines. One thing that's a little bit surprising is that you are expected to eat a lot of things with your hands, but they also have very small tissues or napkins as we call them in the US. In the US we have big napkins, very often very big cloth napkins. You can make a huge mess. We're eating barbecue in Kansas City or pizza in New York. You make a big mess so you gotta clean your hands. Here it's like, eat with your hands, but they're small, small tissues. So those two things don't seem to go together for me. Anyway, it's pretty thick and medium. Very crunchy, that's good. It's gonna go really well with my rum. Best mangoes in the world are here. They are sweeter and juicier, and it's just the most pure mango taste you can have. They're so good, it's my favorite. Mm. Mm. Brooklyn's obsessed with them too. Mm. Oh, what are you doing, buddy? Opening the coconut. It's too dirty to put sunblock on his arm. Remember, protect your skin. Load up on sunblock and reapply every two hours. PSA from Aaron. Not just any sunblock, you gotta use biodegradable, that's key. I just got a coconut, but it's been in the salt water for too long, so it smells like salt and coconut. It smells horrible. What? The wind is actually blowing my way. It smells terrible. It won't make me sick, but it's disgusting. Because it's covered in salt water. He cracks me up. Just like that coconut. Just like that coconut. I think we're ready to get back in the boat, head back to the dock and get dropped off at our resort. We're gonna have a little break and then we have some evening activities to do here. All right, kiddos, let's go. We are leaving a little bit later than expected, but that's okay because it's a private boat, it's a private tour, and we have a few hours of downtime here coming up so we can do pretty much whatever we want. All the boats have numbers on them, so we know which one is ours. We're number 51. And the ride back is probably going to be about 10 minutes because they saved the best island for last and the closest to the dock, so it won't take much time to get home at all. And just to be clear, when she says they saved the best island for last, that's this one. I'm about to jump off the end of the boat into the water. I'm actually going to cannonball. You ready? Go. This is a great first half to our day. We're not done, we have more to do, but it's good to have a little rest in between, especially for the kids, a little downtime is good. But I'm so glad that we're ending on such a good note with Colt jumping off the boat, they're getting to sit up front. We're all having a good time. If this dock is a rockin'. Don't come a knockin'. Oh, really? I guess, I don't know. I was like, hey, let's party. Let's party. Okay. Thank you, baby. Woo! Yeah, that wind really came in. <laughs> shortcut, huh? Yeah, they took the shortcut. Yeah. Do like you have like a dark green? So we have to stop and drop off our snorkel supplies and then we're going back to the resort. Mmm, that's good. It's caramelized and... Kuya Andrew picked up some snacks for the kids, a Coke and these banana, are they called banana cubes? Banana cubes, so it's like sugar caramelized bananas. What 
let me correct it. It's not banana cube. It's banana cube, like a play on barbecue because they they roast it on the grill to get the caramelization. Another correction for me. <laughs> Those are actually deep fried. We oh my goodness. Julia <laughs> Andrews is spoiling pounds. us and going nuts. He just pulled over one more time for another stand and got Colt some more banana cues. And, yeah. and also, oh, holy smokes, oh, look at man. that. Look at, all the, look at all that dripping on the side. Can you eat it whole? Banana. It's a banana spring roll. Yeah, yeah. like a banana yeah. spring roll. So it's exactly. covered in rice paper <laughs> and then deep fried. What happened to the chair? It takes a while to get to the actual banana. <laughs> I still haven't got any banana. <laughs> Got some banana in there. Really good. Mm. It's way better. You just got the rice paper. Whew. We're gonna get cleaned up, have a little break, and then we'll see you for the evening tour. Just a couple hours later, and we're ready to head back out. It's a whole lot darker now. Meeting back up with our gang. Hello. Let's go see some fireflies. Sit up front or in the back, bud? Back. Good evening, by the way, my name is Ed, your tour guide for a Right away, we step out of the van and Ed is greeting us. He's gonna be our guide for our firefly tour. Hi, Ed. Welcome. And we're hopping right onto our boat. It's been such a long time since we've been on a boat, I can't even remember what it feels like. Hold the rail, and uh, slowly. Hello. First thing we have to do is put on our little life preservers. Coast Guard requirement. Brooklyn uses hers as a blanket. So serious. We're gonna start off with an orientation with Ed. I know we're going to see fireflies. This is ironic. We're gonna put on some insect repellent because of the other bugs in the area. We're also going to transfer to another boat, a smaller motor boat. Ah, uh, thank you. So the boat we're on now is really just a shuttle to get from where we were out to the place where we're gonna get on the motor boat so that we can go do the firefly viewing. Keep an eye on that table because we're going to be back, you'll see. Naturally, this is going to be pretty dark from here on out until we get through the firefly part of it. We have to turn off the lights, of course, because we wouldn't be able to see the fireflies if the lights were on. Are you seeing them? We're going to have our first sightings right away. And in the Philippines, they believe that mountains and valleys that have fireflies are enchanted and that maybe those fireflies are actually fairies. Oh, and I see some. Come there. Now this is the first spot here, Mom, and so we call it the outpost. Earlier, you don't see them flickering. Look, and then they flash. It's such a clear sky. The fireflies almost look like the twinkling stars. They almost match, but we are really lucky with this weather. You don't feel the wind where we are right now. We're kind of protected by the mangroves on each side. And it's just beautiful, beautiful clear sky. We could even see Jupiter. A few fun facts about fireflies. The males are actually brighter than the females and they don't hear sound. The thing that makes them glow brighter sometimes is actually lights, because they it, are attracted to other lights, and especially red lights. So our guide has been using a red light up and down in the trees to help make them glow a little brighter for us. What do you call fireflies? I grew up calling them lightning bugs, but apparently they're exactly the same thing. It just depends on what part of the country, US, or what part of the world you're from. I called them fireflies growing up, but I've also heard them called glowworms. I used to have a toy glowworm that was supposed to be a firefly. We're done with the firefly tour. We learned a lot. We saw a lot of fireflies and now we're pretty hungry and it's good timing because dinner is ready for us on our boat. So we're gonna eat on the water. We have so much to eat. We have the national fish of the Philippines is lapu-lapu and shrimp and pork and chicken adobo uh, and lumpia. See, I'm saying it right, lumpia. 
we got right rice, of course, and then like more sea, sea grapes sea. today, and bananas and pineapple, and we can't <laughs> wait to dig in. I said mangoes, did I say mangoes? I didn't hear you, but maybe. I'm saying it now, we got mangoes. This is actually our last night in Palawan before we head back to Manila. So it was great that we got to eat with Ilsa and Andrew and our new guide, Ed, tonight. We're gonna head to the shore. And we're gonna see all those lights over there. We're gonna see what that's all about. Now that we've disembarked from our little boat trip, we are right here on the Bay Walk, which is also known here as Bai Bai. Up until 2004, this was actually a residential strip, so locals lived right here along the shoreline. But in 2004, there was a massive fire and those homes were destroyed. The government then built homes for those residents just about a half a block over and made those available to them for 500 pesos a month for 25 years. So very affordable. And ever since that period of time, this has been built up into a massive park lined with restaurants and it's one of the favorite areas for locals to spend time with their families. It has been a privilege to spend these past three days with Ellen's Travels and Tours, with Ilsa, Andrew, and our driver Frankie. But we're not done making episodes here in Palawan before we leave for Manila. So please make sure to subscribe, hit that notification bell so that you don't miss the next video. But we want to say thank you so much to Guide to the Philippines because they have put this entire package together for us and we are going to put a link in the description description so you can check out all of their packages and tours and activities and transportations that they offer. We'll see you in the next episode. There's the rest of my mango if you want some. Actually you still have some on your face. Wait. Oh my god I dug a hole I put my feet in it and then when I took my feet out my shoes got stuck in the hole. Wait. What? My shoes got stuck in a hole when I put my feet in, when I tried to pull them out. Just now? No, like a while ago. All right, we'll go find your shoes. Hurry okay. and come back and meet us here. He buried, he buried his feet. feet in the sand with shoes on, and then he pulled his feet out and he realized that his shoes didn't come out. And apparently he thought, oh well, oh, well. I'll deal no, with this I later. I didn't notice that <laughs> until now. like we're showing a little behind the scenes of what it's like to parent Cole. Can you feel them? Yeah, I feel them right here. Okay. All right. They're still right here. They're still in there. No! By the back heel. You got it in the back heel? <laughs> I don't even think my head went underwater. If you couldn't hear him, he said, oh my gosh, it's so shallow. It's literally waist deep and he just jumped in. And he's, his ears are ringing. All right, swim around, buddy. 